So to start off this episode, we have four prisoners and I decided that we're only gonna try to keep one. And actually, Frog is in the process of talking to Orange over here. And let's see how much resist he can get down with Frog's amazing negotiation ability. And this prisoner has 85 relations with Frog, 10.9 to 7.5. So that's 3.4 resist he's able to get down each time he talks to Orange. That's quite a lot and that dude's gonna join us soon. As for the rest of our prisoners though, we're gonna sell them off to this Royal Tribute Collector. And for some reason, we can't actually sell one of them off. We can only sell off Circa and Dragon Dragonfly, and that's gonna give us quite a lot of royal favor. Royal favor gets harder and harder to come by the later on you get, and some of the quests to get it are really difficult. Doing that gives Takamaku the title of Acolyte, and he needs a bunch of new stuff. Like he needs some royal gear, he needs a throne room, and he needs a more impressive bedroom than he's already got. However, if it really hits the fan, he can call in a trooper squad, which will help us out. He also gets this Psylink Neuroformer, and that's gonna increase his Psylink level. And it also gives him the Psycast Neural Heat Dump, which will dump all of his Neural Heat onto someone else, but they will go into a non-damaging coma for a day. It's not super amazing for us right now because all he has is Burden and Pain Block, and Burden's pretty good. It will slow a target for like 15 seconds, but Pain Block seems to be pretty useless. We got a Transport Pod Crash. This guy Floyd has a couple gunshots in his leg and his arm. This dude's really old. He's 80 years old and he's got cataracts in his eyes, so he does not see that well. And his stats aren't super amazing. I mean, he does have some intellectual, but we already have a better crafter. He is a priest, though, and he might have some special abilities. So this guy actually could be pretty useful. It says he's a space refugee and he's not a part of any faction. So we can rescue him, and if he doesn't end up joining us on his own free will, then we can take him prisoner. We rescued Floyd, and his right leg did end up getting infected. Usually with old people, infections are really bad if they're above the age of 50, and yeah, Floyd is 80. However, with the priest trait, he gets a 20% more immunity gain speed. Speed. So that's going to kind of counteract the fact that he's old. So he should definitely survive the infection or we can just chop off his right leg as just kind of a last resort if the infection does get really bad. We did also get a 42% tend on it as well. So I think he should be okay. His room is also really clean. Floyd has recovered and has decided to leave. Yeah, we'll see about that. He's also still got his infection, but he's going to survive it. His immunity is at 70 and the infection is only at 54. So him being old is not that bad, I guess. But yeah, Floyd thinks he's going to just walk away from this. No, he's absolutely not. He's a space refugee and doesn't belong to any faction. So as far as we're concerned, he does not have any rights. We're going to arrest him. Or not. There we go. And he's now our prisoner. He's only got 18 resist. That's not actually that bad. After capturing him, Frog's gonna give him the chat like, hey dude, we rescued you. You belong to no faction, like why not just join us? You'll be much better off in our colony. And yeah, that did work okay. He got 1.6 resist down, but Floyd needs to know Frog a little better. So fast forward about 10 days and we've gotten Floyd's resist down to zero. He is ready to join us. It probably was sooner, but I wasn't paying much attention. And you gotta actively switch from reduce resistance over to recruit. He also has a 100% recruitment chance. I'm guessing that's because Frog's negotiation ability is so good. And there we go, he joined us. He does have advanced heal and he has purify, which can purify scars. That's insanely good. We have a few colonists with scars. And by the way, if we invest points into comprehensive purity, he can cure more advanced ailments like cataracts. And wait, actually at level zero, he can cure cataracts. So I guess he can cure his own cataracts. He has no mana right now and it costs 70 mana. But yeah, once he gets some mana, we'll have him do that. And here we go. So Krika is now finally in a daze. We've been actually trying to force a mental breakdown on him. We've given him a tainted flag jacket. And though you can't really tell, here the jacket is not covering his privates so he is naked we also made him sleep on the ground and outside he's got a sleeping spot actually right here and we did imprison him as well he already had a mental break but i think you have to let him just go through the whole mental break in order to have a chance at him being able to get his tortured artist inspiration i was also thinking that i'm not sure if i want to force mental breaks on him yet because he's only got 12 crafting if we get him up to a little bit of higher crafting there's a much higher chance that when he does have that mental breakdown and then get it's his inspiration, he'll be able to make a legendary. With the snap out of it mod, colonists can convince others to snap out of their mental breaks. It's a pretty low chance though from what I've seen, and this is actually the first time I've seen it happen. And I think the chance goes up if they have better social. 
And okay, it looks like Cricket got his inspiration. The next item, art, or furniture he creates will be two quality levels higher than it would otherwise be, which does allow the creation of legendaries. We ended up researching gas operation and that unlocks the ability to make various weapons. We're gonna have Cricket make an LMG as I think this is probably the weapon of choice in our small corridor to kind of mow down groups of enemies. Frog should be able to use this really well with his trigger happy trait. Meanwhile, we got another just random crafting inspiration on MK and she does have 12 arts. We're having her make a jade large sculpture and they both have 12 in their respective skills which gives them both a 20% chance to make a legendary. This is really odd. We just got another inspiration. Orange will successfully recruit the next prisoner regardless of difficulty or resist. We don't have any prisoners right now. I do however know how we can get some. So we sent MK and Rolaro on a little mission up to the Blue Plateau and they are a very hostile tribe. These guys are all sleeping right now. I don't know why they're sleeping out in the rain. But we had MK chug a mana pot and we're going to have her drop two Eye of the Storms on these guys. This one and then we're going to have her do another one go in probably like this way and apparently this cassowary is attacking her and okay actually they are they're all running already well that was quick it looks like the second eye of the storm did absolutely nothing and the rest of them just got away as for prisoners we got this guy irobe who is a slow learner so he obviously learns stuff slower but he works quicker he is also a brawler so he gets more melee and more melee hit chance which is good because he's got 12 melee so yeah we'll have him be a meat shield for sure and when he's not doing that we can have him do intellectual which he is slow at learning it 75 percent slower wow that's that's really bad, but he will research quicker. I don't know if the burning passion for intellectual will counter out the fact that he's a slow learner, but yeah, we're probably just gonna have him do research and then when we get raided, we'll suit him up and we'll have him go into melee. Barilla the Gatherer, however, is actually really solid. She's a quick sleeper, which amazing. That's one of my favorite traits. Creepy breathing is not so good. It's gonna kind of annoy people I think but she's physically adept so we can teach her special combat forms and she's also good at shooting in melee she's got a burning passion for melee so we might teach her some kind of melee focused script and make her become like a, I don't know seals a monk already so we already got a monk I haven't really gone over his abilities yet but there are other melee classes as well or there's some range like there's a hunter sniper we could also turn him into those he's also got a burning passion for plants and yeah we can always use more planters and actually we have to capture him first before we can tend his wounds Meanwhile, down here in this room, we got some stuff burning. There's nothing that we really care about too much. Like, they have pemmican, some wood here, but yeah, none of that is really a big deal. Um, we should definitely go explore these other rooms, though. I don't know if they're on fire, but yeah, okay, this room's actually decent. There's some arcalum in here, which values at 13 bucks a pop. There's nine of it, and oh crap, some stuff burned in here. It just looks like it was some furniture, though, because there's just some wood on the ground and some pemmican. What about in here? Oh, here we go. This is their main loot room. They got some gold. Good amount of jade, I wanna say like 50-ish jade. Some silver, some more arcalum, and here they have some athenium by the way, six of it, and this value's at 20 bucks a pop. They got some more gold in this other room, some plasteel, or in this final room. Oh, there was stuff in here. This was a loot room, and it got destroyed, apparently, because yeah, there was some light leather here, which is currently on fire. Since we don't really wanna deal with a fire, we can actually just reform caravan, grab everyone, and we can grab all the items we want instantly, I think. Whoa, they have 420 pemmican? Where was all the pemmican at? And we can actually grab the light leather that was burning, and I think the cloth was burning too. They had a bunch of steel too. I kind of want to take the steel. Like we have a bunch of that at base, but we can always use more steel, although that does kind of weigh us down. We'll take the high quality stuff though, like the Athenium, Arcalum, Plasteel, Uranium, and I guess we'll take the steel. It does slow us down by a bit, but we're pretty close to base, so it's not a big deal. And okay, that's actually not bad. Krika made a Masterwork LMG, which is pretty much what we were expecting. I mean, once Krika gets up to like 20 crafting, then yeah, he will have a really good chance to make legendaries when he does have a creativity inspiration but yeah a masterwork lmg is quite a bit better than like a normal one it does three more damage whereas like a normal a good and an excellent all just do 11 damage they also all have the same armor pen but masterwork gets five percent more armor pen and then yeah like obviously the better quality the more accuracy and this thing is really inaccurate it just fires a lot of shots so yeah the accuracy is going to be pretty important on this thing. So we got the two prisoners back to base and Orange had inspired recruitment, which by the way, it doesn't really make sense that he's getting inspired recruitment because he only has four social. There is a mod that actually fixes it where it makes it so you only get inspirations on stuff you're actually good at, like intellectual or mining. And it adds more inspirations to the game, but it's kind of a newer mod. And so I wasn't sure if I wanted to use it. But yeah, Orange got inspired recruitment 
and we're gonna have him use it on Barlow and Barlow should immediately join us, which is awesome because he has 47 resist and Irobe, our other prisoner, has 34. And, oh crap. I'm pretty sure I have to use the option recruit, which you never do unless they have zero resist because reduce resist builds up relation between the two. If you just try to straight up recruit them, they will not build up any relations. And I found that out the hard way. So wait for around another day and then orange will try again. Meanwhile, MK is finishing up her jade large sculpture, 50% chance it's masterwork. Oh, a legendary. There's only a 20% chance she got a legendary, 20% chance it was actually just excellent. So yeah, that was actually really lucky. And this thing is pretty insane. It gives 2080 beauty. I wonder what happens if we install this in our main research room along with this other masterwork large sculpture we have. The beauty of this room is now 22.3. I think it like doubled. It's also really dirty too. Apparently no one's on cleaning duty right now or something. And like, why is Floyd researching? Dude's freaking blind. Like that dude should be cleaning over researching. He actually isn't fully blind by the way. We did purify one of his cataracts. So now he's only got one left. But still with a cataract, he's only researching at 83% speed. Whereas Yokro is researching at 211% speed. So yeah, Floyd, get the heck off of our high-tech research bench. You are on cleaning duty, Floyd. And what the heck is going on? Floyd just got inspired. I'm so confused why we're getting these random inspirations. I mean, he's got 11 crafting, so I'll take it. He's got a really good mood, so I'm guessing that's why. It's just weird because like we haven't got inspirations for so long. And then all of a sudden, I think today we got like six inspirations. Maybe they did like a patch and they changed the inspiration chance or something. I don't know. But yeah, after doing a good amount of cleaning, by the way, these animals are making this room really dirty. I think that's why it's so dirty. The beauty is up to around 25. Yeah, this freaking rhino, dude. Get the heck out of here. The rhino's animal filth rate is 3.75. Like that is pretty dirty, I think. Compared to like, yeah, the beagle is zero filth rate. I wonder if the filth rate has to do with training too. Like how cool would that be if you train up your beagle and it has zero filth rate, but if you don't train it up and it has like zero training, then the filth rate is much higher. That would be pretty cool. And then like the alpacas, they only have a filth rate of 1.25. They're still kind of dirty. Yeah, we're going to keep those things out of this room because there's really no purpose of having them inside anyways. Like they don't nuzzle. I wonder if the rhinos nuzzle. Yeah, the rhinos don't nuzzle. So yeah, all of our animals, minus the pug and the beagle. By the way, does the pug have any filth rate? The pug has a 0 .08 filth rate. I guess pugs are apparently more filthy than beagles. I mean, we have trained it up. We gave it five tameness and three guard, and our beagle has the same. Either way, though, our area for animals is going to not encompass this room anymore. Get the heck out of here, rhino one. And no frog. You are not going to chat with Barlow. Orange is going to do the talking here. And yep, Barlow did join us. Who, by the way, is in need of rescuing. We're going to bring him to his own room. And we're going to leave this as a prisoner room. I was thinking about giving this room over to him. But people are constantly walking through it. And prisoners don't actually mind if you walk through their rooms when they're sleeping. They don't get disturbed sleep. But regular colonists, if you walk through their rooms, then yeah, that upsets them. Okay, there we go. So that's the inspiration we were looking for. Krika had another mental breakdown and Frog for some reason was able to calm him down again. That resulted though in Krika getting another inspiration and I'm wondering what we should craft now. With Krika's now 13 crafting skill, there's a almost 24% chance that whatever he makes will be legendary, 54% chance that it's masterwork, only 20% chance that it's excellent. Excellent being the worst outcome here. So in our research room, we got three high-tech research benches now and we researched multi-analyzer so that increases the this by another 10%. We are researching really quick now. Oh, Floyd, get off the freaking bench, dude. At least we got Yokroy over here. I mean, okay, no one else is manning him, so fine, Floyd. And okay, an alligator is hunting our undead, which unfortunately this guy does not have a weapon. I think this alligator might actually kill Dwebia here, which is kind of unfortunate. Can we outrun it? They're both so slow. Nope, he can't outrun it. He's going to have to fight. This is taking forever. Our other undead Billow is actually out here. We restrict our undead to only be allowed to roam outside of our walls. I should have definitely given them melee weapons though. This is the first time they've been hunted by any animals. Which is kind of weird that this alligator is hunting this undead for food. As you can't really eat undead. But yeah, we got Billow. Oh, Billow was going to come over here and save him. But no, it looks like Dwebia actually survived. His jaws shattered and two of his ring fingers were bitten off. But he'll survive. Dwebby is our undead builder and we don't really need him building around camp. He's only got six mining too. I think we might actually replace him anyways because yeah with those two fingers bitten off that does lower his manipulation so he's going to be even worse at building and mining now. And you know what actually there's an item stash quest down here and we're just going to send out our undead with Rolaro to accompany them and that will help them move quicker on the map as well. I don't know how strong this item stash quest is but hopefully these undead with Rolaro can take it out and I think once we take it out we're just going to leave the undead there. 
Before we dump them off, we're also going to try to do a little mining as we're completely out of components. And we just researched the ability to make a sniper rifle and it requires eight components. We're not completely out. Actually, we have five and there's some compacted machinery down here. Maybe we don't need to wait for them to go all the way down there. I guess we can start crafting that sniper rifle earlier then. So yeah, it turns out we did have some extra components lying around the base and we're going to have Kricken make a sniper rifle. Hopefully it turns out to be legendary, although it's probably just going to be masterwork. Rolaro's caravan is almost at the item stash quest. They're going to be there in 0.8 days and they did just rest and one thing I noticed is both of the undead were using our bed rolls. I brought along two and Rolaro did not use one of the bed rolls. He is at zero comfort. So that was nice of him I guess to let the undead use the bed rolls. And here we go. Our caravan made it to the item stash. I'm not sure if I want to have Rolaro go in or if Dwebby and Billow can just two man it. Once we enter these doors there should be enemies that will spawn outside I think or they might be inside. Not really exactly sure. We're going to grab the reward. It's a legendary harp, and I actually don't know what's so good about a legendary harp, but okay. Uh, yeah, they both just died. Well, it looks like don't send undead away from their master, I guess. It looks like Rolaro is going to have to solo this. I hope that wasn't some kind of trap or something that they died to. I don't think it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they just evaporated. Well, I think we can just reform the caravan and just get the heck out of here. We grabbed their tainted flak vest and tainted plate armor. Undead don't mind wearing tainted gear. And unfortunately, their helmets are also tainted now too, but we're just going to give those over to other undead anyways. We could also grab their bodies, but they're pretty heavy and they're going to slow us down. Yeah, sorry, Billo and Dwebia, but this is going to be their final resting spot. We'll grab these urns and we'll put their ashes in the urns and that'll just make us all feel better about that whole situation because those guys were good dudes like they mined a lot of steel for us we have 3k steel right now holy crap we just got two back-to-back -back marriages on september 3rd mk proposed a frog and on the same day orange proposed to llama it's actually crazy how quick orange was able to woo llama although i guess they've both been mining like just randomly they were out here mining together and yeah orange is seven mining and llama has nine and by the way they're both researchers too like they're actually perfect for each other because yeah orange has 10 intellectual llama has 16 and i think the reason why they're actually out here mining is because we just got done researching a tech and there was a period of a few minutes where i actually wasn't researching anything and yeah llama just grab all that we're gonna have to start hauling stuff ourselves right now because we don't have undead to just haul everything and we made a masterwork sniper rifle. I'll take it. I mean, it's not legendary, but it's still really good. It's got 45 range, 100% accuracy at long and medium, which I mean, even the excellent ones do as well. And like the good is 95% at medium and long. But being masterwork does buff the damage by six from 25 to 31. And it gives it a good amount more armor pen from 38 to 47. That's quite a lot. And I'm actually not sure what to do with this masterwork sniper rifle. Like, I don't know if I should give it to Frog because he's trigger happy so he could fire it a lot quicker although I was looking at some charts and I'm actually really not sure how the accuracy works because I was looking at this accuracy calculator and for a masterwork sniper rifle just a standard person with 13 shooting has this amount of accuracy if we make them a careful shooter they're way more accurate but if we make them a trigger happy it goes so far down to the point where they can't even hit shots really at all I don't feel like this is accurate though like there's a 2% accuracy at 30 range for trigger happy like that's not right and even for like our LMG it's it says we have pretty bad accuracy, like 12% only at 12 range. So they have to get really close, like at five range, 32 accuracy. If they're like right up next to us, we get 50% accuracy almost. I feel like that's wrong, but I mean, we'll be testing it out somewhat soon, hopefully. I really actually want to get raided. We haven't got raided for a while. And like orange only is seven shooting, but he is a careful shooter. And yeah, like it says he has really good accuracy with the sniper, even with his only seven shooting skill. Meanwhile, Frog has 13 and there's just, it's hopeless for him to use the sniper. That's what this chart's saying. I feel like that's gotta be wrong, right? We can test it with Frog. And yeah, that chart's gotta be so wrong, right? Like 8.3% chance to hit this guinea pig and there's so many negative modifiers here. The weather's bad, so that lowers it. It's behind cover as well, so that lowers it. The size of the guinea pig also lowers the chance to hit by a lot, and it's still 8.3%. I actually don't know what wall stops means. But yeah, we hit it first shot, which like, that was lucky. That was a one in 10. I 
really am, I'm sorry guinea pig we didn't have to test on you like you didn't have to literally be our guinea pig we just shot off this thing's front right leg like we took the saying used as a guinea pig a little bit too seriously on this guinea pig oh well there's actually a lot more where that came from there's a ton of guinea pigs around our map we should start taming them because they only have a taming requirement of five which is weird like guinea pigs are so easy to tame you just pick them up and you literally put them in a cage but yeah guinea pigs are actually pretty cool they have guinea pig fur which I think you have to kill them for the fur but it does have a pretty high market value of five bucks so it actually might be worth to tame guinea pigs and breed them our monk seal has 11 animals so yeah he should have a really good chance of taming them but yeah like right here we're pretty much almost max range of this gorilla and there's a 40 percent chance to hit it we do actually get a huge modifier because its size is so big we're almost twice as likely to hit this thing versus like a normal target but the weather does hurt a bit and actually yeah i don't want to hunt these gorillas they could revenge and they could all just mow down frog and yeah now i want to test out the lmg on frog which by the way i noticed something kind of odd about this thing it was made by Krika, but he named it mk's thrusting which is frog's soon-to-be wife it says this weapon bears a representation of MK waiting patiently as Dragonfly removes her clothes with a sense of purpose. Dragonfly wears only a despairing expression. This image relates to MK stripping Dragonfly on 15th of April May. I think I remember that happening. <laughs> Nothing happened though, I swear. Like, it was just MK removing his clothes so we could sell him off as a prisoner and we could keep his clothes. Or maybe something else did happen. You know what? I wasn't actually watching that entire exchange. So, after MK removed his clothes, close who knows what happened. Either way though, we're gonna have Frog use MK's thrusting on not actually these monkeys. One thing I noticed about these monkeys is they have a nuzzle interval of one day, so they could actually make good pets and they don't have that much animal filth rate. The lemurs, however, don't make as good of pets. They have a nuzzle interval of five days, so there's really not that much of a point of having them around base. And so yeah, we're just gonna exterminate them. Hopefully we don't hit any of these monkeys. Okay, Frog missed all those shots. What was the chance of that, by the way? He has 18% chance to hit, because, yeah, these lemurs are really small. It's also raining, too, so that doesn't help. Another round of shots that did not hit. That's unlucky, and there we go. He finally hit the lemur for a good amount of damage, actually. And, okay, he killed one of the lemurs. Yeah, I give up on hunting these lemurs. The whole pack's just probably gonna end up revenging. Like, there's not that high of a chance. I think it was like a 4% chance per bullet. But yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that. So this is kind of a monumental event. Our Devil's Strand is finally finished growing. This stuff took forever to grow. And Brutalo, how dare you botch this precious devil Strand. We need, I believe it's like 100 devil Strand, and I think we actually might already have it. I think there's definitely 100 devil Strand over here on the ground. Oh, Brutalo, by the way, has a bunch of health problems, including including no left arm, so I think that's why she botched that. Her right eye is complete. okay. <laughs> She's got issues, so we need to give her a new right eye. And we gave her some smoke leaf too, because her mood is pretty bad. But even though it says that her eye is itchy, it's at 1 out of 10 HP and it's working at 0% efficiency. Yeah, we're not going to have her harvest anything, I don't think. I think we're going to make her bionic and just install a bunch of artificial parts on her. Because, yeah, she's the one that's physically adept with 5 shooting and melee. And, yeah, we're probably going to end up turning her into a bionic super soldier eventually. And here we go. So, Eokuroi does have 4 crafting, 10 intellectual, which is what is required to make the lich form scroll. But, yeah, with 100 devil strand and 360 unrefined magicite, that was quite quite a lot of our magicite we still have 172 left and we just got that from mainly having our undead just auto mine pretty much the entire map it's not that easy to come by so yeah these scrolls take a lot of resources but we have finally made it and we're gonna now turn llama into a lich which i think that's gonna make her undead and yeah it transforms the necromancer into an undead lich gaining an immortal existence and arcane power once used there is no return she does have a fiance orange too i wonder how orange is gonna feel about this <laughs> She's also going to lose all passion for work except for fighting and research, which is fine. She's only got a passion for research and mining. We're turning her into a lich. And okay, is this going to scare nearby people? Yeah, she's now undead. So I think that's going to scare nearby people. Oh man, I'm not sure we want to do that. It's going to kind of depend on if lich is really good or not. She now has the ability flight though, which is going to allow her to quickly fly to a target location. It's got a pretty fat cooldown though of 180 seconds and she also has death bolt which launches bolts of power carrying anguish of the dead it causes intense pain to any living creatures caught in the blast explosion radius is 1.6 that's yeah that's really small it does throw out two bolts though and it's got a really fat range
range, 40 range. That's like a little bit less than our sniper rifle, but not by much. And actually that's cool. So upgrading to a Lich gave her a burning passion for intellectual now. She has work way slower though, 75% slower. So I don't think it's really gonna matter that much that she's doing research. Like yeah, her research speed is only 58%, whereas Eocroy's is like 200. She doesn't need to sleep anymore though or eat. So she'll be researching around the clock. Also apparently she has 100% ability resist. I think that means that she doesn't take damage from abilities. That's actually pretty cool. And she also gets way more mana and more mana regen. So yeah, that's actually probably a huge buff. Because we can make her cast more corpse explosions, we can make her raise more undead. We can also buff up Death Bolt by making it so it's going to do more damage. And spreading darkness. I'm not sure what spreading darkness is. We could test on these lemurs though. Let's fly over here. And oh, there she goes. She's flying. Alright, well that's flight. Let's toss a Death Bolt on this lemur, I guess. Okay, that's an insta-kill on the lemur. Part of me does want to buff up Death Bolt, but I also want to buff up Raise Undead. Increase the number of undead that she can create with each spell by 1 per skill level. It increases their learned skills by 10% per skill point. If we buff this up to level 3, we can get 5 undead that are just going to be running around the base just mining or hauling or doing whatever. And she could also go on like solo combat missions with her undead army. Or like just mining missions and oversee the undead as they mine around the clock. And she doesn't actually need to sleep. I think that's actually the play. We're gonna invest a bunch of points in the powered creation and we want to get a fat undead army going. One thing I will say that is quite promising is Griffith and Orange are not getting the observe undead debuff movement thing and so I guess her being a undead lich does not affect nearby colonists so that's really nice. I thought I was gonna maybe have to make her own research room which would suck because we have a multi-analyzer in this room which is pretty expensive and I don't want to build another room and then put a multi-analyzer in that room too. I think with that though I'm gonna end this episode. In the next episode Episode, I'm gonna send out Llama and MK on a mission to possibly wipe out like these tribes people down here the blue Kaga and raise a bunch of their fallen brethren and make like an undead army or we'll get raided whatever happens first but yeah with that I want to thank you all for watching if you're still liking the series then drop a like and I'll see you in the next one